Hi, welcome to my channel. This is the first time I received a gun not in a rectangular box. Also, it's the first time I bought a gun made in Italy. Also, it's my very first single shot. There are many firsts with this Chiapa Little Badger 22 LR. Chiapa Firearms is an international company family owned and operated for more than 60 years based in Brigia, Northern Italy. I bought this because it was cheap, $190 Canadian or $150 US. So I wasn't expecting a lot. There isn't much to review and super easy to do the full Monty, so I decided to combine the two. So let's begin with the review followed by the full disassembly. The reason why this little badger came in a rectangular box is because it's a survival gun. It's designed to be lightweight and fit in a backpack. It comes in its own bag should your backpack is full. It will help you hunt for small games in desperate situation. However, it will not protect you from predators. Even though it does come in a 17 HMR and 22 WMR, I would not feel comfortable using those for protection. Now let's dispense with this specification first. Length unfolded is 31 inches. Folded is 17 and 3 quarters. It weighs in at 2.9 pounds. This is the bag. It has straps. That you can put on your back. Comes with a manual. Basically there's nothing much in the manual except uh, I think I read somewhere you can't dry fire with this gun. It comes with a kind of a useless brush. You can only reach this far from the front, this far from the back, from the chamber, and it leaves a void of uh, six inches in the center. Okay, um, let's start from the back and work our way to the front. The back is a plastic butt plate. Pretty simple. Before in front of it, it has a ammo holder, six on each side. Doesn't matter what uh, caliber it is. Here I have a sample right here. You just pull off, put it back in. You have a buttstock that's made out of wire. It's rather short for me because it push, pushes my cheek forward and therefore I can't use the iron sight. And in front of the stock is a grip. Odd, odd grip because I find myself wanting to go like this instead of like this. However, it does come with a rail that you can uh, put a uh, grip to it. In front of the rail is your trigger. It's a um, it's a average weight for the trigger is two and a half pounds. Weight trigger weight. Now the um, from here to the end of the butt, it's about 12 and a half inches. Your LOP. This is the hammer. It um, doesn't have a selector, and the only safety is the half cock. When it's in a half cock position. You pull the trigger, it will not go off. Matter of fact, it has a another safety. When you break open the gun, it here I'm pulling this open, and you see the hammer is moved back. It automatically puts your hammer in a half cock, and that's your safety. Okay. Moving in front of the, um, okay, actually when I open that up, I might as well show you what, and as you open that up, the ejector push the spent round out. And as you close it, it goes in. Above the chamber is your plastic rear sight, rather cheap, and um, there's no protection for the aperture sight. But it's good to have a standby if you're using a red dot and a scope. In front of the sight, rear sight, is four rails. Um, also, it's your hand guard. And it's uh, rather small. And there's a bit too much rails. I don't know why, because you're not likely to put a flashlight or a laser or a bipod on this. So, but 
you know, because of the rails, you can make it a little more comfortable and bigger by putting covers on them. Okay, and then you have a 16 and a half inch barrel, and the diameter of the barrel is 14.3 uh, millimeter. And you get your plastic front sight. Uh, I've saw some YouTubers already broke them already, so they're not very particularly strong. And there is a thread protector uh, protecting 12, a uh, half by 28 thread. So, basically, that's the review. Let's uh, begin with the uh, Full Monty. Okay, I'm back. Now, since this is a single shot, um, there's no such thing as a field stripping. So I might as well start with removing, removing the uh, rails and um, just uh, unscrew three screws on each rail. Now I already removed one already in the center, so just, just to save time. And that's one, that's two, that's three. The rails are uh, made out of plastic rather cheap and short. It's about uh, four inches. And this is what the uh, looks like without the rail in place. Okay, the next thing you would do is to open her up. You need Two slotted uh, screwdriver. And there is a locking washer on top of that. And then the two halves separate. Now to remove the stock, you first there's two screws. Now there are six point screws on either side, one on this side, one on this side. Now when you're separating the receiver, you should place it, yeah, these are the two screws, they're not the same, notice the heads are quite different. When you're separating the two uh, halves of the receiver, make sure it's placed on the right side and hold on because the spring of the uh, the uh, brake uh, lever will spring open. Wiggle and jiggle it. There it is. Making sure your thumb is on the brake lever. Otherwise it will jump. Okay, there it is. And when you open that up, your stock will immediately start to fall out. And this is what it looks like. What basically holds it in are these uh, threads. And on one side is actually completely threaded. And then what they did, they flattened one side of the stock on the left side of the stock. Okay. And this is what your fire control group looks like and you would remove the brake lever it has a spring okay. put that 
there. I'm going to remove the trigger. Next, I'm just going to pull it up. Pull the hammer up and the spring. This is, goes in there. And let's see if I can pull out the, yes, the hammer pin does come out. I'm sure the trigger pin, I could not pull out the trigger pin. Maybe my hands, do, oh, there it is. It does come out. All right. So this is what the two halves look like. Notice the threading for the buttstock. Now the buttstock is adjustable but not by much. In other words, you could pull it out about half another half about half an inch out to get it extended another half an inch, but that's about it from this position. You can pull it out to about this vision. Okay, maybe three quarter of an inch, but but no more, I would say. So in a way, it is adjustable, but not by much. All right, so now we have gotten that far. The next thing we're gonna remove is the, the ejector. There's a screw on the right side, right there, and you unscrew that. And then the ejector slides forward. It's a little stiff. Okay. I'm having a hard time removing the ejector, so what I'm going to have to do is put it back onto receiver like this and like that and then I open her up and then I'll, it moves the ejector backwards all right so I got that done so here comes the ejector That's the ejector screw. Put that together. Next, I'm going to remove the plastic rear sight. It's the it's the ramp type to change from 100 meters to 300 meters. <laughs> Rather optimistic at 300 meters. I think it's 300 meters. I'm not sure, but it says one, two, two and a half, and three. Okay. And to remove it, there is a C clip. On the left side, right there, you need to push that out. It's a tiny C clip, put it right here, and then you basically unscrew it. Now be careful when you're unscrewing the vintage windage. There is a ball, tiny ball, and spring that goes in here. Okay, you see this? See this all shiny thing in there? That's a ball, 
and the spring is behind it. Now I've lost the spring. That's why the ball is still stuck inside. Okay, but there is a spring and a ball. And what that ball does, it gives you, gives you the clicking sound when it when it moves with the winnage. Okay, so like that. Like that. So that's what the ball is for. So be careful. Oh, now the aperture sights. Aperture rear sight. Looks like that. Okay. From here, there's also there is a tiny spring right here. See how easy to lose the spring? And there is a plunger. Plunger out. Oh, here it is. It's coming out. There it is. See the plunger and the spring? And it goes at the bottom of the rear sight. And it goes on the left side of the rear sight. So you would put the plunger in first. Okay, like that. Followed by the spring. And what the plunger does is going to stop the ramp sight from coming out. So that's where it sits. Okay. And then after that, unscrew the base of the rear sight. And then pull it up. There's two lugs to hold it steady. Okay. And that's the screw. I'll leave it right here. And this is where the screws into. This is where your ejector goes in. Ejector screw. Okay, now moving along the barrel. There is a thread protector. You unscrew it. This is a 12 by 28 thread. Basically an AR thread. Oh, and this is your thread protector. Just a plastic. Okay, now we need a tiny, tiny Allen wrench. This size very tiny because on the top towards the back there is a tiny set screw put that in like this and then you turn it oh, as soon as they start to move around you pull that out I was actually surprised that the uh, the thread protector was held in by silicon seal. I guess this barrel doesn't get hot enough, so since it's a single shot, so they were using silicon seal. Uh, for this, they were using uh, some Loctite. So there's a plastic uh, front sight goes right in there like that. And okay, to disassemble the uh, stock from the uh, butt plate, very simple. You just wiggle the stock out of the butt plate, and to put it back, you just push it back in or use a mallet and hammer it back in and the uh, ammo holder will also slide out so to reassemble your uh, little badger just do the reverse from this assembly thank you very much for joining me and please subscribe